Okay. Okay, so two sample Z and T hypothesis testing. It's very similar to proportions, just different formula and not proportions. It's but it's means has the same steps. So when we're testing, the claim is always going to be that the two samples are not significantly different. Okay. So there's no difference between that doesn't mean there's no difference, no difference, but it means that the diff if there is a difference in the samples, it's not significant. Okay. So that's always going to be your claim. So it's always going to be um, mean one is equal to mean two or mean one minus mean two equals zero, right? That's the that's always going to be the null hypothesis when you're doing two sample testing. Uh, parameters and assumptions are the same as last time because we did intervals last time, and then no pooling needed. We don't need pooling for means. Okay. Uh, still using these guys. Still using these three um, uh, conditions assumptions. Uh, now we're using over here. So our null is always going to be this. Our sample, or sorry, our alternative will be greater than, less than, or not equal to. Right below it is the T score, how to calculate the T. So it's the differences between them minus zero. So you don't need to write this minus zero part because if you take away zero, it's going to stay the same number. So technically, this is the formula, but you don't need to write that minus zero part, okay? Bottom we've seen before, top we've seen before. Now it's just the T-score instead of an interval. All right, okay, and then here is our um, conclusion, okay? All right, so now let's go to the last example. Second to last page. All right. So uh, does increasing the amount of calcium in our diet reduce blood pressure? That's the question. Examination of a large sample of people revealed a relationship between calcium intake and blood pressure. Such observational studies do not establish causation. Remember, observational studies are when you're simply observing. There's no treatment, right? If there's a treatment, if you're giving a treatment to someone, it is considered an experiment, if not observational study, okay? If we wanna prove causation, there's only one way to prove causation and that's through a well-designed experiment. Uh, researchers therefore designed a randomized comparative experiment. The subjects were 21 healthy men who volunteered to take part in the experiment. They were randomly assigned to two groups. So 10 of the men, received a calcium supplement for 12 weeks, while the control group of 11 men received a placebo pill that looked identical. The experiment was double blind. So what is double blinding? There you go. Yep. Uh, the experiment was double blind. The response variable is the decrease in systolic blood pressure. Okay, so when you take someone's blood pressure, there's always two readings, something over something, the top one, the top number is the systolic blood pressure for subjects after 12 weeks to see if it improved their blood pressure before and after. An increase appears as a negative number. So if their blood pressure increased after the 12 weeks, that's a negative number. Okay, so this person right here, this uh I think it was all men, right? Yep, this man right here, for example, he had a four, um, his blood pressure, his systolic blood pressure went up by four units, uh, millimeters of mercury, okay? So it went up four millimeters after. So after the 12 weeks, his blood pressure was four points higher, okay? This person went down seven, okay? That's what it says. An increase appears as a negative number. So it's kind of the opposite, right? So negatives are bad. Negatives means it didn't work. 
blood pressure went up after the treatment, whatever treatment they were in or the control. Uh, positives mean it went down, it worked, okay? All right, so the question is, do the data provide convincing evidence that a calcium supplement reduces blood pressure more than a placebo? Because a placebo is nothing, right? Placebo is nothing. It's just the regular, it's just, um, it's, not, it's not a treatment, okay? On average for subjects like this one in the study, okay? So we're gonna do a test, but before we do a test, we gotta pick out some things. What are some things we can pick out? So 21 total. Yep, 21 total for sure. Okay, so 10 were in the treatment group. 11 were in the control group, okay? So how can we write those? What do we, what symbol can we give 11 and 10? No, no, it's not a mean. Oh, N. Yeah, N. So N, 1, N, C, N, so P, N. We could, if they already labeled them for us, we could use just one and two. You could do that. You could also put group C for calcium and group P for placebo or group T for treatment and group C for control up to you okay but yeah since they already labeled group one and group two we'll say group one was 10 group two was 11. okay that's one thing what else what else would you know what we're going to need right because you have our formula you have the formula you know what statistics we're going to need so let's figure those out now so we don't have to do it later. So what else are we going to need? The mean of, you're right. Keep going. For group one and two. So we got X bar group one, X bar group two. Along with that, we're going to need standard deviation for one and standard deviation for two. That's definitely something we're going to need. So put group one and L1, put group two and L2. Okay, so one of our stats for each one. So L1 first, I get an X bar of five for group one. And then S is 8.743, yep. 
Okay. And then I'm going to do X bar two, or sorry, um, L, um, one bar stats L2, which is X bar two, and S2. And I get negative 0. 0.27, 2727 repeating. So we'll go 278, or no, 273. And then S is 5.901. All right. Okay, so anything else before we start our test? We don't, don't worry about population parameter yet. Don't worry about um, hypotheses yet. That's part of the test. I'm talking about anything that's not part of the test that we should no, right now. One bar stack. Oh, my numbers are way off. Just check your L1. Okay. Um, anything else that we're going to need? It's randomized. So, yeah. So, SRS, it's not an SRS because these 21 men volunteered. So, when we put SRS, we're going to put random assignment, not not an SRS. We're going to put random assignment into groups. So it's not stated as an SRS because we put SRS. Okay. We want to we want to note that when we do that, when we get there. Okay. Okay. So first one. Population parameter. We have two populations. Mu1. True, mean. Okay, so N1, X bar 1, S1, who are they referring to? The true, mean. True, mean. Blood pressure. There you go. I was looking for that difference, change, something, because these aren't blood pressures, right? They're changes in or differences in blood pressure. So something noted like that. Yeah, because our numbers aren't blood pressures. They're differences, right? You can't have a negative blood pressure. So they're differences. So somewhere true mean difference. Um, in blood pressure. for men who take a calcium supplement. There we go. Two is gonna be the exact same thing, but without calcium supplement. So we're not even gonna write. So we're just going to write the first line. So really, it's just true mean difference in blood pressure for men. And we'll stop right there. We're not going to put who take a calcium supplement. because They don't take calcium supplements. They're, they don't take anything. Placebo is nothing, right? Okay. Next one is hypotheses. Hypothesi hypotheses, we have our two hypotheses. We have the null, which is that there's no significant difference between the two groups. Their blood pressure will be the same. So one equals two or one minus two equals zero. You don't have to have both. One or the other is fine. What's our alternative going to be? No, um, U1 is greater than Yep. Reduces, right? Reduces right. is the key word there. So it's not going to be not equal to. Which one do we think is going to be based on that? So if it reduces, so if it successfully reduces, which number should be higher? X bar or one or two should have a higher mean. Which group should be higher? One. 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 Yeah. So we're going to say one is bigger than two. If we can show that, 
that means it there's significant it significantly raises um, or significantly lowers your systolic blood pressure. Okay. Alpha level didn't say, so we're going to use five percent. Test statistic. Okay, so we're going to use T equals X bar one minus X bar two. You can say subtracted from zero because in the in the notes I have minus zero at the end here, minus zero. You don't need to write that because if it's minus zero, there's no change. Okay. Then the bottom is S of 1 squared over N1 plus S of 2 squared over N2. That same one we did yesterday. It's called the standard error of the mean. Degrees of freedom is going to be the same thing. Degrees of freedom, smaller N. Minus one, smaller n minus one. So this case will be ten minus one. Okay. All right. Next one. Uh, there you go. Okay, let's see. Okay. So, let's see conditions, assumptions. Check for group one. Check for group two. Okay. So number one, SRS. Well, we already talked about this, right? It's not an SRS. So we have to explain that there is randomization, but it's not an SRS. Okay. So we could say uh, treatment and control groups randomly assigned. There we go. Okay. Uh, two ten percent condition. So little n is less than or equal to ten. Little n is less than or equal to ten. Okay, so we don't have a number for big n, but what will we put in there for big n? All men. Yeah, we all men. Yeah. Yep. 21 healthy men, right? So we would put healthy men. Doesn't say what country or doesn't say anything about specifics. So we'll just say all healthy men. All right, and then the last one is normality. So it's going to be one of the three from our list that we had earlier. Let's see if I can pull up that list. There it is right there. Populations are normally distributed. N is greater than 30. Graph, uh, or we don't have either, so we have to show a graph of both. Well, we so have we do have the numbers. So does it say populations of these healthy men, their of their blood pressures are normally distributed? Nope. N is thirty. We remember it's separate. Each group is thirty, not one, not added together. So that one doesn't work. So we do have N one, or we do have L one and L two, right? So what we're gonna do 
is we're going to go to box what? Do modified block, modified box for, make sure this says on or off, or if it says off, make sure plot one says on. My uh, stat, my um, calculus class was using it. They were graphing on it, so it might be off. So if it's off, just turn it on. Otherwise it won't show. Uh, we want a modified box. First L1, go to zoom. Stats, number nine on mine. Oops. It's a crazy graph. It's this graph here. Yeah, so if there's something ugly like that on the graph, probably something in Y equals, just go erase whatever's in Y equals so that... Uh, yeah, because they're different numbers. So just sketch that as best as possible. We're looking for outliers mainly. Okay. And we do the same thing for L2. Zoom stat. So no outliers on either of them. So we're happy there. Real question, real quick though. What's causing those, you can see the, the, the whiskers, right? We call them the whiskers, the part that extend from the box. Those are really long. The box is really small. What's causing that? There you go. There you go. The data in the center, the box part. So this box part right here is 50% of the data. Half of the data is in here. Those are really close together. Outside of the half, middle half, there's a lot of spread. Okay. Yeah, no, not enough for outliers. So sometimes people see this long one, they're like, whoa, there's a lot of numbers here. Nope, there's the same number of numbers here as there are here, as there are in this little tiny window here and this tiny window here, 25% oh, of the data in each. They're just more spread out over here, okay? Okay, We're done with those. Calculations. Okay, so we need a picture for this guy here. T equals X bar one minus X bar two. X bar one was five minus a negative. So it's actually gonna be five plus up here. Five minus a negative 0.273. And then down here, we're going to have square root. We're going to have the first standard, the first standard deviation is 8.743. Over there's 11 in here. That number squared, the top number squared. The bottom number. Wait, it's 10. Switch around around. Yeah. Yep. First one's 10, second one's 11. Yep. And then let's see here, 5.901 square root. So some of you on tests leave out the next part. You, you do this and you set it up, then you go right to your calculator. Make sure you answer that question. What is it equal to? The calculator will tell you, but you gotta write it down, okay? And then also some of you miss points for this too. You don't put T. You just put nothing there or Z that you put there, right? Make sure you're labeling correctly. If you're using T, I want a T there. If you're using Z, I want a Z there. Don't leave a blank, okay? Okay, so uh, what's down here? What's in the middle? Zero, because that's the claim, right? 
That's the claim when you're doing two sample tests. Okay. Now, where are we going to shade? Well, first of all, where where is our value here? Where's our no, not t yet. Where are we gonna? Where's what's our number here? Over here, over here. There you go. Five point two seven three. How did we get five point two seven three? There you get the top. Yep. The difference. This is the difference between the two sample means, and we said greater than, right? So we're going to shade to the right. Okay. Done with that. Now we're going to go to calculator. We already got all the stuff in there. So stats, which tests are we going to do? We're, we're doing test and zero is an interval. Oh, zero. Which one did I go? Uh, you need to go back up. It's four. Number four, okay. Four. There you go. Two tests. Two. Yep. Number three, we rarely use because it's, it's always going to be T. So number four. Okay, so if you have the data in L1 or L2, use data. Use data. Just tell it where you want. I got my list one. My group one is in L1. My list two is in group two. Frequency is always going to be one. Uh, we want greater than. Pooled. No, never for means. Calculate or draw. Okay. So the first thing, T-score. Write your T-score down so that we know what it's equal to. 1.60. Okay. P values right underneath it. Zero six four four. Okay. Degrees of freedom. Well, our degrees of freedom was what on this problem? Nine. Calculator um, approximated to fifteen and a half, sixteen. Okay, but our degrees of freedom was nine. Everything else we knew already. Okay, or we have we have written everything written down there. From X bar one down, we have it all written at the beginning. Okay. All right. Calculations are done. Now let's go to conclusion. Okay, so three things. Compare p-value with alpha level. That's the first thing. Um, since p-value, which is 0 0.0644, is greater than alpha level, 0 0.05. That's the first thing. What happens if p-value is too big? We fail to reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, we have or lack sufficient evidence? There you go. We lack sufficient evidence or significant evidence. to suggest or to show that what did out what and then what did um, a um, alternative say alternative hypothesis said yeah to suggest that the alternative is true mm -hmm. to suggest and what did the alternative say the alternative said that there's a significant difference in people who take calcium versus not take calcium to suggest that men, that healthy men, uh, 
or I should say that systolic blood pressure, that blood pressure is reduced in healthy men. And there you go. In healthy men who take calcium supplements or take calcium pills or whatever you want. Therefore, we lack sufficient evidence to suggest that blood pressure is reduced in healthy men who take calcium supplements, even though the numbers are different, right? Men who had calcium supplements improved their score improved in the sample overall the men who didn't decreased but it wasn't a significant it wasn't significant enough it wasn't a big enough change to suggest there's something there okay all right okay so we got 21 minutes i'm going to give you some time to tomorrow i'm going to do we're going to do another practice frq I'll find a practice FRQ. We're going to do that. And then the second half of class, we will do, um, I'll let you work on this assignment too. So I'll give you today, half of today and half of tomorrow to do the assignment. It was not, this, this assignment's not due till for, uh, Thursday, end, end of Thursday. Okay, so start now.